So in this tutorial, we're going to talk about how you go from like a slab to making a table. And it's more about the epoxy. The process where I actually ground down the slab was lost. Some of that footage is missing. So we'll just move to a quicker sanded version. Um, but it started as two and a half inch slab and you'll see the end result. Thanks for watching. The tension can be measured in a couple different ways. Like there's potential energy in that you could burn this wood, but there's also potential energy in that it it wants to like bind up. This wasn't like necessarily kiln treated. So I'm relaxing the back of it right now to try to get it to flatten out a little bit. So kind of a poor way of explaining it, but I'm sort of breaking the back, you know, just like getting it to, like giving it a massage with the power tool. <laughs> So back to the making this badass table. But we keep telling them, you know, you need to quit grinding on it because you're gonna break through. Guess what? A little bit of breakthrough. So we gotta have some fun with this. Let's go. Hey, so we had a major breakthrough. What's that? Oh wait, that's you! Don't, don't. Whoa, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. You push down on this, you might put a finger through it. It's like the soft spot in the baby's head. And yeah. a couple of things on here. I'm just trying to give you a crap being oh, you know. You're doing a good job. Thanks. I yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. You got to get him when you can get him. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. punch him when he's down. Punch him when he's down. Kick him, you know, uh, a little uh, bit of. Hey, see all this dust? Uh -huh. You just, you just <laughs> go like this and it goes away. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. No, I know. It's all in my car. Yeah, I know. <laughs> What I'd like to say about this piece of wood is like, because I've already been told, wow, that's beautiful. And I'm like, yeah, pretty much like a idiot could have made this piece of wood look beautiful. I mean, it's, I feel, feel a little blessed to work on it. I'd like to tell the guys, like, try to be connected to your work. And <laughs> sometimes take your shoes off, connect with the wood, try to. It's just nice to get my hands on such a fine specimen of wood and to know that it just like fell over in a high school and somebody I know cut it up and there it is and it's going in a trailer. From slab to table, long time sanding and getting it ready but it's finally ready for glass so be heading in. So here we go, we're going to do epoxy on the table. I'd like to give you a little commentary on that is that if I would have been lucky when I started it, you could have got a couple of hints that I'll give you now. Would have made my life a lot better. Anyway. Uh, here we are, epoxy room. Basically, I've already wiped it down. My hands are clean, you know, so I'm not getting hand oil on here. And I've sort of cheated a little bit. I've taken the resin, and I put the resin already in here. And when I do so, and I'll show you with the hardener, always pour it down the side of the thing. You want to keep the least amount of bubbles out that you can the entire time. Normally, I would be wearing a mask. This is 50-50 epoxy. 
uh, basically this would be um, uh, bar barcode uh, type of box that 50-50. So it goes off slow. It's not going to start to fume on you for a little while. Um, but no matter what, I just always say you should wear a mask. If you put two pairs of gloves on for a job like this, probably not so necessary, but sometimes this is handy. If I need to flip this off because that one's dirty, I still have a clean one and I can keep rocking and rolling. Put the resin first. The resin is the lighter of the two materials, so the hardener is heavier. So if you put it in second, it's going to want to mix better. And there, so there's a couple bubbles in there, not, not the end of the world. But now if you go down the side, you can see how the two materials are separated right now. And the nice thing is that the one that looks like it's on top, floating, is not actually floating. The viscosity, the thickness of it, actually is just making it sit there. It's the heavier of the two materials, and that's why I say put the resin in first, and the catalyst or partner in the second. So when you go to mix, a lot of people are like, oh, it's epoxy. Just start going, or they'll put a drill in it. This kind of stuff, you have time. So just take your time. Like, once again, I'm saying, just don't get air bubbles. I mean, it just it will save a lot of uh, headache down the road if you can just remain calm. I know it's glue. And, and then so you can start to look, and it starts marbling. What I'm looking for, and usually I tell everyone, like, listen to one song on the radio. There would normally be tunes in here. Um, but one song on the radio, and then usually you're getting pretty close. You know, that's like four four minutes. This w should turn clear. should be able to see through the bottom of it. And that's when you know that you're done mixing. And Look at the born on dates on your resins. The, if you get the fresher stuff that hasn't been exposed to the elements or... Uh, especially sunlight, uh, keep, keep your fiberglass materials out of the sun. If you see these little lines in here, you burn through like this stuff, which is, I think it's uh, more like a barky material. I don't even know how I found these things, but these little glimmer things I think are going to light up if I'm correct in my thinking. With this stuff, like this barcode stuff, because it is 50-50 and it takes a while to go off, like, it's better to overstir than understir for sure. It always hit the edges of the pot too, like, it seems like, I think it's the resin, but one of them wants to kind of hang out on the edge. Something to look at here. So you'll see that there's bubbles. You kind of can't avoid it. Now something you can do if you really want to get touchy about it is you can just take it and you drop it on the ground and what you're doing is kind of you know just agitating the liquid and making all those bubbles want to seek the the sky where they belong as I've been dropping it I've been spinning it a little bit and all this will do is cheat like where all your bubbles like remember there was bubbles in there before but now look in the middle because I spun it they all wanted to travel to the center. This would have been a good time for that other glove if I would have had it and not been in an example, but now I can just get rid of all this, but in this case, I'm just gonna start with new fresh gloves. Like OJ. What? I must have quit. This is exciting for me. I've been grinding on this thing for a while. And as I mentioned too, it's just like a, such a gorgeous piece of wood, except for somebody to throw this in. Um, when pouring the epoxy, and once again, I am no expert on this, so I just try to do it. But if you're, once again, watching those air bubbles and just trying to get it on there. So, you know, one of the things that'll happen is if you don't start moving it pretty quick, you'll get lines where you pour it. It's kind of weird that way. And once again, see I wanted to get all gung-ho, but if you slow down, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, break up your lines, and wear a mask. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks for watching. And I hope it turns out good. And um, yeah, if you learned something or um, were inspired or intrigued or had some positive feedback, love to hear. Thanks. <laughs>